Hey, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to measure your arm speed, AKA your release velocity of your disc golf throw um, using just whatever camera you normally record with. And um, this is not at all meant to undercut or undermine um, what the tech disc and what radar guns can do for measuring our speeds and the data of our throws. Um, this is more of a complimentary thing where if you either you know, don't have access to those you just can't afford one or you're, you're waiting you know, to be able to order one, whatever it may be. I personally don't own a tech disc yet, um, but I've been using this technique for many years, ever since I started building catapults back in like middle school, really, and I've just refined it. And really the umbrella term for what we're gonna be doing is called photogrammetry, which is just a fancy word that means like the science of measuring real life stuff with photography. So in this case, we're gonna be using the video data that we're recording with our camera to be able to measure a physical property of a throw, which is gonna be arm speed in this. Well, this video wouldn't even be worth posting if I didn't have at least one elementary level um, MS Paint schematic. So here we are with, with the schematic for the setup for the camera. But um, this is kind of what I like to, to use as a guideline to make sure that I'm getting consistent footage that's going to make the measurement accurate. So the biggest prerequisite for this is it has to be outdoors with good natural lighting <clears throat> we need the sun or some constant light source because indoors artificial lighting often runs at a frequency with pulse width modulation so the light is actually turning on and off at a high frequency but because the exposure time of each frame that the camera is recording is not an infinitesimally short um, exposure time if it records during a time period where the light is during an off period during its pulse width modulation it's going to cause a lot of frame distortion and warping, which is going to completely make our reference length measurements worthless. So we have to do this outside in the sun and the brighter the environment, the better. And that's because digital cameras automatically adjust their exposure time for each frame based off of the amount of light that's available to the sensor. So if we have an abundance of light, the exposure time can be very, very short during the video, which is going to minimize distortion of the disc when it's traveling very fast across the camera's frame. So I like to have very bright lighting. If it's not super bright out, it'll probably still work. These modern cameras on these phones are so good. Um, but these are kind of like, you know, the ideal setup parameters. And then as far as the setup goes, um, the camera should be about 25 to 30 feet straight out to the side of your release point and as perpendicular to the target as possible. So for example, this blue disc right here represents my release point. I'm throwing right hand backhand. So my body is gonna be on this right side of the disc as I throw down the target line. So I have this camera about 25 to 30 feet off to the left. You can do about eight, um, seven to 10 long paces. I would do eight to 10 long paces if you don't wanna measure it. That should get you about 25 to 30 feet. Um, and then we wanna be as perpendicular to the target line as possible. So you can see my camera's view orientation is forming a right angle with the target line. Um, so this is pretty important. Now you'll never overestimate the speed if you mess this up, but it will underestimate the speed. Um, if this camera were to be angled left, like 10 degrees or 20 degrees, for example, the disc's horizontal translation across the video's uh, frame will be decreased. So it will basically make it look like the disc did not travel as far sideways across the frame. And then when we get into our video analysis, you'll see that that could reduce the measurement a little bit. It's not really the end of the world. I'll, I'll show you some numbers. Um, if we're off by 10 degrees right here, we would essentially be multiplying our speed result by the cosine of 10 degrees, since the cosine is a horizontal projection of that vector. And that's like 0.984. So um, if we were to you know, subtract that, that would end up being like 1.5% of a decrease in speed. Even if you're off by like 15 degrees with your angle, uh, 15 of cosine, um, we'll just do this time 100, and then we'll subtract that from 100. Um, you'd be like 3.4% um, less. So it'd be like, let's see here, 0.034 times. So if you're throwing 70 miles an hour, that's going to make like a 2.4 mile an hour difference, which isn't nothing. Um, but, you know, if you're within the 10 to 5 degree range of perfect, it's going to be more than fine. And you can always go back and adjust it with this math afterwards. But um, the easiest way that I find to align this is to pick a target very far off in the distance. So if I can like pick a tree, for example, at the end of the field that's like 600 feet away, um, I can stand over the top of my phone and I can align the body of my phone. So I'm standing over the top, I can align the body of my phone with that target that I'm gonna be throwing towards. Um, and because this horizontal separation is so small, 
that's going to still be within one to two degrees of the actual target that I'm throwing towards, even though there is a little bit of a, um, you know, we'll call it an off bore sight angle that we're looking down. But that's going to be perfectly okay because the farther that target is away, the better. So that's a really easy way to do this. Um, you can also use cones that are perpendicular and like line your camera down the cones. Um, but I like to stand over the phone and align the body of the phone straight down the target line. And then when I'm doing my throw, I'm just aiming towards that target line to get that speed measurement. So that's an easy way to do that. Um, and then as far as camera specs go, I personally like to use one time zoom at this distance and 1080p at 60 FPS is perfectly fine. If you have enough lighting, you're not gonna have a lot of edge distortion on the disc. You could also do 4K 60 um, if you're willing to deal with a little bit like larger video files. Um, you can even do 120 FPS at 1080. I personally prefer 1080 at 60 or even 4K at 60, um, but any of these are gonna work perfectly fine. We really only need two viable frames after release to get the number. Um, so it's not the end of the world if you're not you know, able to shoot at some crazy you know, high, high speed. Um, but something to look out for, especially if we're getting into the summer months here, and I've, I've, ha I've had this recently with my phone because I'm in Florida. Um, if you're recording really data heavy video, and the sun is beating down on your phone and it's like 95 plus degrees out, that combination of electrical current through the phone with the solar heating and the environmental heating can cause the phone to get close to overheating. And the hardware will start throttling the amount of energy that it's using to protect itself. And because we're recording really high data rate video, this can actually cause frame interval fluctuations. So you could end up not having 1 60th of a second between frames. And this could be a huge issue for the speed numbers. So I recommend just looking out for how hot your phone is. If it's starting to overheat, just squeeze it between your hands for a couple minutes to try to um, pull some of the heat out of it into your body, just conduct some heat out away from the phone. Um, but just something to look out for if it's really hot out and there's a lot of sunlight. Um, so this is how I like to get the video. Um, and now we will get into the analysis portion, which is once we've recorded our video and then we get onto the computer. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, so the program that I like to use for this is called Kenovia, which is just a free open source program that gets the job done very nicely. So this is the website right here. It's um, kenovia.org. That'll just be a free download that you can get here. And once you have that installed, um, you can open the program here and you can go ahead and open the video that you're going to use. I've already gotten my video opened here. And then down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub the video to the point where I release the disc. So the point of release is right here. I want the next frame after release where I can clearly see the edges of the disc. So right here, as you can see, because I have good lighting, we don't have a lot of distortion. And even though it's a white disc with a white background, it's very clear to see the edges here. So the next step is going to be, we need a reference length on this video. So the best reference, le reference length to use, excuse me, is going to be the disc because the disc is going to ideally be a constant distance away from the camera if we've set up our camera correctly. So what I'm gonna to do to get my reference length is I'm gonna go down here to the line tool. I'll click the line tool. Sometimes it zooms me back out, so I have to zoom back in. You can move around with the center mouse button if you need to. So what I'm gonna do here is get to a point where I can still clearly see the edges, but I'm not so zoomed out where it's hard to see. And I am going to try to get as perfectly close to the edge as I can here. And I'm gonna go from the leading edge of the disc to the trailing edge of the disc right here. And this is gonna be my reference length. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to the move tool here to get out of that. So I have my little reference length drawn. Now we need to calibrate this reference length so that we know how long each distance in the video is. So I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna to go to calibrate. And then this is where we're about to basically put in how long this disc is, what its diameter is. So I was throwing a gateway ether right here. So I'm just gonna do a simple um, gateway ether diameter Google search. I can see it's 21.2 centimeters in diameter. So this is gonna be 21.2 centimeters and it looks like centimeters is already selected here. Now this is super important. Um, this drop down right here, this needs to be changed to aligned with the image axes. Um, this is not a perfectly horizontal measurement, nor is it a vertical measurement. It's a measurement that is aligned with the camera's viewplane, but not with the horizontal or vertical axis. So make sure this says aligned with image axes, and we have our disc diameter put in here in centimeters, um, or whatever unit you want to use. 
So now we have a reference length of 21.2 centimeters. So now I'm gonna to skip to the next frame. I'm trying to measure release velocity. So I wanna measure the speed of this disc ASAP. So I have this point right here, and now I have the disc at the next frame. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another line with the line tool, and I'm gonna measure from leading edge to leading edge because that's the most clear thing for me to see. And I already have a leading edge point right here, so I don't have to change the frame again. So I'm gonna basically draw this line from this leading edge all the way down to essentially intersect perfectly with where my previous leading edge was, which is right here. So this disc traveled 59.33 centimeters between these frames, which means it did that in 1 60th of a second because this is a 60 frames per second video. So all I have to do to convert this to speed is I'm going to essentially do distance divided by time because speed is distance divided by time. Now, since it's 1 60th of a second, I'm gonna actually just multiply the distance times the frame rate for simplicity because I'm only measuring one frame here. So I'm gonna take 59 on the calculator, 0.33, and I'm gonna multiply that by 60, which is my frequency in Hertz, which is basically, you know, per second. Um, and I have a speed of 3,559.8 centimeters per second. So I'm gonna copy this. And this is just my lazy method of doing it. You can manually convert it if you want, but I'm just gonna type in, basically paste it there, uh, centimeters per second to miles per hour. And I'm just gonna use Google for this. So there we go. 3,559 centimeters per second equals 79.6 miles per hour right in line with what I would normally expect. If you see like a weird freakish measurement, um, you can check a different frame in the video for your, for your lengths. But um, that's pretty much, you know, the speed output that I'm gonna get for this throw. And if you want to back estimate and account for angle errors, and in fact, I know on this throw, I threw this about five to 10 degrees offline with the camera. So I wanna show you guys, if you do want to account for camera mistakes, or let's say you threw a hyzer off to the right, you didn't wanna throw a hyzer too far left. So you had to aim out to the right and you didn't move your camera to adjust for your you know, target point shifting to the right. And you're like, oh dang, I threw that thing, you know, maybe seven-ish degrees off to the right of my actual target line. What you can do is you can take that estimated angle. Again, we're estimating here. This isn't going in any record books by any means. Um, so I'm gonna say seven degrees. I'm operating in degrees here. I'm gonna take the cosine of that. Okay, so that's like a 0 0.9925, whatever. Um, now I need to flip this fraction. So um, I'm basically going to find the one over X button, which is eluding me. Okay, here we go, one over X. So now we have 1.0075, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna multiply that by 79.63 times 79.63. And then there you go. So we'll just say it was 80 miles an hour, yay. But that's how you could correct for angle errors. It's not a um, requirement. I would just set the camera up pretty well and it's most likely gonna be more than good enough. All right, so that does it for this. So appreciate you stopping by and watching the video. Um, please let me know in the comments if you need any further elaboration on anything. If there was you know, any details that weren't 100% clear to you, I'll be happy to provide more information and I'll get back to you as quick as possible. And uh, if you do me a huge favor and please subscribe to the channel, um, that way you'll be notified when I make future videos like this and other stuff related to disc golf and fitness. Uh, so I'd really appreciate that. And also I'm still bringing out more clients through my website signup system. So if you want any backhand form coaching, I'll put the website URL up on the screen right here, but it's basically just nickcrush.com, which is just one word, uh, nickcrush.com. Um, so be happy to work with you guys and uh, push your backhand even further with that. So thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you guys next time and take care.